Well, we saw the cheeseburger, and that's all fine and well, it being soft tissue, soft flesh and uh, bun, but we actually wanted to give it a go with uh, something harder, something more substantial. So uh, using a regular well-known auction site, I managed to purchase uh, a skull, a goose skull, and we're going to use that and uh, see how hydrochloric acid reacts with that. Hydrochloric acid, when it's concentrated, is dangerous. Obviously, when it's dilute, it's not dangerous. You've got it in your stomach. Though, if it swells up inside, wells up inside your um, esophagus, the tube that goes from your mouth to your stomach, it can cause quite unpleasant pain. That's better. So we've got a big conical flask now. And what we're going to do is again put some hydrochloric acid in there. Um, so we'll do that first. Graham is ready with his big tube. So what we're doing is, again, we're getting some zinc metal. Maybe we'll get a little bit more at this time. It should effervesce quite a bit. And Graham is ready with the tube to collect it. Now, you can see the effervescence, so all the hydrogen should be coming off, hopefully in collecting in here. What you can actually see, though, Hydrogen gas doesn't have any colour or anything. What you're seeing is a bit of water vapour, because this reaction here is very hot. HCl reacts with metals like zinc and um, magnesium to produce hydrogen. Cross your fingers, Graham. We're going for it again. It's stuck, it's stuck. Yay! That was it. <laughs> that was it? That was the pop. Did you not hear the pop? Okay. Yay! Okay. Yay! No. <laughs> was it loud? No. I think it's because it's in such a big area then, so you get this right. bigger pop. When I was at school, one of the boys wasn't thinking what he was doing, and he added sodium carbonate to his zinc instead of hydrochloric acid, so no hydrogen came out. The teacher came along and said, ah, I'll really get this started. I'll add concentrated hydrochloric acid. Now, concentrated acid reacts with the carbonate to generate a large amount of CO2 gas. So the teacher poured in the concentrated acid, there was a huge bang, and part of the apparatus, which was glass, shot up to the ceiling and smashed the glass on the ceiling and then came down. This is a very good lesson that when you're using chemicals, you have to read what the label says on the bottle, or you can make a really quite serious mistake. We'll see what happens when we uh, add the acid to the beaker. So I really quite like to show you a little demonstration in the lab, an experiment, which, when it works, is one of my favourite. So let's go to the lab and we'll have a look, if she's not here. Yeah. So the skull's been cleaned really well. Um, there's not a single bit of flesh or soft matter left on it. It's purely the bone. You can see it's actually bubbling away, so the bone is reacting with the hydrochloric acid. We're gonna leave that now. I'm expecting that actually to take longer than the cheeseburger, so we'll leave it in there to stew and come back in a bit and see how it, how it looks. So the reaction is reaction of cobalt chloride, and we're going to dissolve it up and then see what happens if I add concentrated hydrochloric acid, HCl, to it. So here is the cobalt chloride. You can see the rather nice reddish crystals. Doesn't quite match my lab coat. No, oh, it appears it's flipped over at some point. I didn't see when that happened, but it was at an angle like that originally with the beak still there and the head down here. And it's now dissolved to such an extent that the whole lot of it can fit parallel to the surface of the liquid. So. It's clearly changed colour, and you can still see um, it bubbling and, and frothing. First of all, I'm going to add water, so, and it is dissolved. And I'm going to put half into this tube, so we've got two tubes with the same amount of material. So it looks as if there's not much of it left, so let's take a look around this side. Okay, so most of the skull has gone. The only thing that's remaining there is the beak. So if we lift it out and take a look. Oh, okay, so 
from the look of it, it's only the beak that's left. And there's the jaw. Let's lift that up and take a look. Oh, kind of gloopy. So there we go. The beak is clearly made of something different from the skull. So the skull being bone um, is mainly calcium phosphate and the beak, um, I think, um, is mostly keratin. So it's a lot of protein um, and the HCL just hasn't really touched it. I mean, it's given it a bit of a sticky layer from the feel of the beak through the tongs, but the skull's completely dissolved and it's just in here in the soup. So in this one, I'm going to put some water. And you can see that when I put in some water, it's got a bit lighter than that because I've diluted it. So let's see what happens if we add some concentrated hydrochloric acid. So I'll try and add it so we have the same volume in both. So we would expect that if we add the HCl, that it should make the colour go lighter. But as you can see, it's gone not only blue, but it's gone much darker blue than the pink. So we have diluted something and it's got darker. And the reason it has got darker is because the chloride ions have reacted with the cobalt. So now we have in there cobalt with four chlorine atoms round it. And to begin with, we had cobalt with water round it and chloride ions swimming in solution. So I think that this is really quite a nice colour change.